I um, I want to make sure that you hear. Are you hear this? Like, it's an incredible soundtrack, man. Yeah. Like totally. it's just. Ugh. I keep I yeah I'm listening to it in my car when I drive. Have you have you gotten tired of it all? I mean, or is it just like are you still? Because I mean, I I know that Sucker Punch worked on this thing for like all right, we can start this nonsense, I suppose. I know that Sucker Punch started on this thing like a while ago, and I know that because pretty much right after we wrapped on First Light, which is the DLC for Second Son. Mm-hmm. They were already, you know, as a studio, that's what you got to do. You can't just rest on your laurels. You got to let's go. So they were already kind of cranking on ideas and iterating, and, and they wanted to find a way that they could expand upon who they were as a studio and create this new franchise. But, like, what do you remember what like what time you came into it? Like, when, when did your, like, journey, I hate using that term, but begin with this. It is, I mean, it's been a journey. Uh, November... 2016 no is when I got cast, I think. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it started off really slow. And then uh, last year was very busy. Um, I was actually doing another gig uh, at the Oregon Shakespeare Festival. So I was there in Ashland. So I had to fly back like every month or so to, you know, do mocap or voiceover. So I had to miss a c- couple of shows. And uh, couple meaning like 25 shows but uh (laughs) yeah but it was amazing that both osf and sucker punch made it work for me so financially it was very great (laughs) good year year. i i didn't know this about you man first of all Mm -hmm. i i didn't even realize this because i was like i feel like i've seen this guy before i just powered through man in the high castle oh yeah okay that was my um I could ask you about your experience on that, but I, I, I have a feeling I know what it was like, <laughs> you know, yeah. um, the, without giving too many spoilers about it. But that was like back in the long, long ago and the way back mm-hmm. when we could still fly on airplanes and go to different places. <laughs> um, right. I had all of my shows that I knew that my wife wouldn't want to watch. And mm-hmm. so it, it, it is right up my alley. It is not only is it history, but it's alternate history Anything yeah. dealing with Nazis, I'm like, I'm in, except for the actual belief system and the whole political partiness of it. But as far as like dramatizations of that, um, Rufus yeah. Sewell to me is just an incredible. Mm-hmm. All of the performances are just across the board great. Um, and then I was like, that's where I know you from. Um, <laughs> you had an untimely demise. <laughs> that yeah. Um, Although. Technically, I I was still alive. They kept saying, "I'm you're still alive," or you know, like every year they're like, "Are you available?" And I'm like, "Yeah, sure." No and they don't call me. No yeah. way. They just yeah, kept you I mean, in the merch. Yeah, but I mean, I'm you know, I wasn't expect, expecting anything. You know, it always amazes things. me. Like I, I have a lot of friends in the writing community that that you know are are, are former USC grads and and have grown up in that mm. whole system and. And the way that it works, like, like uh, this is us, apparently. And I don't want to be telling tales out of school, but apparently this is us. The way that they structure their show is based upon their, act- their actor's availability. And I went, oh. there's not somebody with, like, a grand plan as it all laid out. I was like, I know in the, the very last, you know, Damon Lindelof kind of thing where it's like, I know the last line of the last episode of the last season. I can, I can throw a dart right now and hit it. Everyone else is like, I don't know, man. Let's just see if like Dice K is free. <laughs> Let's just write another episode <laughs> with him in it. Um, but you that would be lovely. Wouldn't it be yeah. great if it if it all just kind of came back and they're like, I mean, technically, I guess you are still alive, right? Because because of the alternate, alternate yeah, multiverse. I don't know. Uh, I didn't see the fourth season. So you saw that fourth season? I finished it. Season? I powered oh, through okay. it, man. I, I, I did a lot of flying back and forth between London. And so uh-huh. you, can, you can put down some serious TV watching in a total of you know, 25 hours on a plane. Um, yeah. there's, there's, uh, David is a, does an incredible job of like, dude, talk to me about this, talk to me about this. Because the way that I know about you primarily is because I've been, and especially right now hearing your voice, I'm just like, oh my God, I feel like you should be saying Koga. You know, and like following, you know, I'm following the wind and I'm following, my horse's name is Koga. Yeah. Uh, oh, that's right. That was absolutely the way. I don't know what you've named your horse. Um, oh, 
it's Nobu Deluxe because it's the deluxe version of Nobu. Also because I, I knew I was going to name him Nobu because of the trailer. In the trailer, okay. the horse's name was Nobu. It was like, you know, I got to honor my horse. Yeah. <laughs> the legacy <laughs> was established. I, yeah. dude, I got to tell you, and we're going to, we'll talk about all sorts of stuff, but it's impossible to not with uh, mm -hmm. the, the tremendous success and, and outpouring of accolades that people have had for this game. I, I want to know, we can share in our stories as far as like what it was like to, because I don't know if you had ever done PCAP before. Was this your first foray into this? Yeah, the first time. Yeah. But Since coming then from I've done theater, one more. I, th I would think mm -hmm. coming from theater, you have like a, what I've seen by and large is is people who have spent that time on that stage really yeah. adapt to themselves well. And even some people I've talked to um, who have gone on to become really, really prolific actors have been like, oh my gosh, this is like bringing it back to my theater days. This is the, like, I feel like I'm really acting. Was that your experience yeah. or when you, when you first put on that, that suit, that suit, mm -hmm. um, which one of my favorite stories of that, I think it was, um, man, it was either Gary Oldman or it was, uh, oh, what's his name? British actor, Bill Nye said, um, I'm, I'm not wearing that. My character wouldn't wear that. And they're like, <laughs> you're not wrong, <laughs> but you're also yeah. quite wrong. Yeah. What was your reaction? Did you have any knowledge of what PCAP was? Did you performance capture when you're in the suit and, and the cameras and everything? What, what was your first yeah. point like that into that? Well, that's, that's why I wanted to get into voiceover and, um, yeah, I, it was my goal actually coming. Um, so I, you know, I did, uh, OSF for four years and then kept coming back to LA, you know, I wanted to do TV and film, but I needed, you know, other things to do. Um, but mocap was like on top of the list of something that I wanted to do. And I think I've seen your performance in the last of us part one, you know, that's on YouTube. Yeah. Um, yeah, that was a, I think was a big influence. Uh, and uh, yeah, as far as like the comfortability of it or using it, you know, you have to use what you got. Sure. So I always, I always thought like, cause you know, they use the avatars when you're on stage and you can kind of see what your character is going to look like. Right. And my avatar always had a, um, an armor, like a samurai armor. Right. So when you, when you got that helmet and the, you know. You can kind of use that. Suit. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. There um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There are sometimes I found out that when we were doing Last of Us Part Two, there's a scene where I just kind of wanted to put my my thumb in like my belt loop of my of my mm -hmm. you know, and so what would be my belt loop, but it was just kind of on the the because it's a two piece suit that you wear, so my thumb kind of went on the outside of the belt that was holding my pack for everything, and I yeah. found out that fixing that animation was more expensive. From a resource and money standpoint, then <laughs> then the photo booth scene in uh, Left Behind, the DLC for Last of Us, which was more expensive than the entire ship scene in Uncharted Three. So he's like, "You sticking your thumb <laughs> in your belt loop." So I I know what you're talking about as far as like using it, but there's sometimes when that can be like, because especially there's some Velcro straps that go right here, and those always just feel like suspenders to me. And they're like, those don't exist on your car on your characters. <laughs> um, so right. you got it sounded like you kind of flowed into it pretty well and 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 took to it pretty yeah. pretty easily. You didn't. Well, I think you know. Yeah, I always I always thought that like. Um, yeah, it is like theater. It's like um, theater class. It's like it's a you know open playground, right, for actors, and you kind of get to you know it's a it's a sandbox really to just imagine what the world is, and you know you get to imagine and be a samurai, and um, there's yeah, there's nothing better than that, you know. I see um, a and sword. I think a lot of my, I see a so sword what? right there behind you to your right shoulder. It looks like oh, yes. I did not do this on purpose, but yeah. Come on. I did on. bring this on stage. It's not, it's not a. Um, did you have it before? Not sharp at like... all. This was af uh, as, as soon as I booked the gig. And it's only like $100, you know, at, at little, in Little Tokyo. Um, so I thought, you know, I think it was important to just have it. And I actually like went on YouTube and practiced a little bit um, just to get the feel of it. Um, you know, because it, it really informs the movement of the character. How much do um, you feel you had to learn 
for for this? Like, how much did you know? Coming, every actor lies right. on their resume, right? Um, so yes. there's like also, <laughs> but there's some shit that's on your resume that I'm like, yo, is he for real? Can he actually? We'll get into that. Wait, did, you, did you look at my resume? Shit. <laughs> Well, Dick oh, no. was like really exhausted. He was like, bro, this is, I saw this. This is really cool. I was like, I'm going to find it's it. It's all a lie. It's all a lie. <laughs> Every it's actor. Lie. I remember the first movie I ever booked, they were like, hey, can you can you ride a horse? It's down to you and another guy. They just need to know, can you ride a horse? I'm like, I'm from Texas. What do you think? And they're like, we're so sorry. We figured as much. Just want to make sure. Never been on a horse before in my life. So literally, I booked the job and I was like, I need to learn how to ride a horse like right now. Right. Yeah. Um, and you did. You went. You went to class. I did. I did one class, and then I showed up on set, and then it was like, oh no, we're we're like on the realsies. Like I've been using training <laughs> and stuff, and I was out yeah. with like some legit cowboys, and yeah, they were. I mean, I'll never forget the the one of the stunt coordinators named Dutch. He's this old uh -huh. vaquero dude, and he kind of looks at me. He's got. I mean, as as classic as you can think, he's got like chaw in his mouth. And he kind of leans over and instead he goes, how good of a writer are you? And I was like, I think I can. I go, Don't you fucking lie to me because we're going to find out in about five seconds. And I went, I could use some help. He's like, all right, now I know what I'm dealing with. <laughs> and it was authentic because you're out in the wilderness. So, I mean, like every actor goes into that audition, into that meeting going, I got this. I got yeah. this. Once you get the gig, was there any like... Was there that fear? Was that 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 sense like, oh shit, I don't maybe I maybe I can't pull this off? Or are you like from the downbeat of the one? I know I've got this. Um, you know, when I got the audition uh, sides and description of the character, uh, that's when I said that, oh, this role is mine, and I just need to go get it. Damn. In that, in that, as far as you know, not not the sword stuff, definitely not the sword stuff, but as far as uh, you know, being able to tell stories with my body, that's, you know, that's my theater background. And the fact that I started doing voiceovers, um, the fact that I'm Japanese and I'm the same age as the character, like all of that, I just hit the mold, uh, fit the fit the mold. Um, but was that, and, you know, the fact before, hmm? was that established before or did they bring the, did you come to the character or did the character come to you? You know what I mean? Did they change anything oh. about the character once they cast you? Do you know? Oh yeah, totally. Um, yeah, I don't. What What are the rules on like Sony? Like Sony PR is like telling me like don't uh, give away the behind the. Okay, yeah, this I'll, is okay. I'll, I'll <laughs> and Andrew Kelly and just make a call. Yeah, you get no, as long as you don't give away. I I found out as long as you don't tell erroneous information about proprietary stuff that Sony does, then they're, mm -hmm. they're pretty cool. I, I did a I did a great podcast with Neil Druckmann, and by the end of it. Andrew Kelly mm -hmm. was uh, was you know producer and, and especially making sure that he keeps everybody everybody happy Sony happy Naughty Dog happy everybody happy. I was like yeah. Andrew, are we good? Do we need? To? He goes like, no, just one thing. Out. You, know, you just made a really weird fact up. <laughs> I was like, oh okay. He goes take that out. Um, okay. But beyond you know, it's cool. we always want to make sure that we're not. We like to show the people the sausage, but we won't necessarily show them the factory. But that's why sure. I love talking about like, your personal experience. And I don't know because I mean I've I've talked about mine where it's especially with Sucker Punch going in. I don't know if you guys had to do the, the, the face mold and all the scans that you do, because for many of you, I'm sure it was your likeness. Like it was, it was, yeah, it was you. Um, but I don't know how much it was like, we already know who Jen is, or once we cast Daisuke, now Jen kind of takes on a whole other level, or if that was purely in your performance. So I'm just curious mm. what it was like for you. I feel like once, yeah, once I was cast, I definitely, you know, got to collaborate with them. And I feel like now that I'm playing the game, I'm still in act three, but I feel like a lot of who I am and who other, the other Asian American uh, cast members, just their life force kind of informed the, the writing of it as well. Um, I don't know if it's, you know, by coincidence or not, but I see it happening. Uh, the story I wanted to share was even from the very first audition, uh, one of the scenes had a fox and a flute. And uh, I, J Jason actually told this story that even from that uh, audition, he they liked the way I was um, <laughs> kind of a Disney princess. Like <laughs> my gin, my gin knew how to, you know, connect with this fox. And, you know, I think that's in the game now, you know, uh, and I, that's probably they probably took you know 
the way that I was uh, with animals uh, and and just went with it. I, I, I have to imagine, you know. But it's strange but, when you're on the stage, right? It's yeah. auditions are the worst period. <clears throat> Um, but mm. when you're on the stage and there's, I, I, again, I suppose theater has informed you for in, in some ways, but like, you know, I love that cup. <laughs> Winnie the Pooh. I played, I played Winnie the Pooh once and yeah. Wait, what, what? <laughs> anyway, it's, it was a children's show in like junior college. Do the, you got, you got, you can't say that and not do the voice. Like you got to do the voice. Oh God. I don't know. It's it's been a long, long time. Understand this: it's going to be. It, it, no one will ever measure up, but uh, you know, to to the original. So you that's that's the bar we always know it's going to. Oh. Be. So please, but I want like mine is awful. I always sound like it. It's just it's just bad. I don't even like to do it. But you're gonna you're gonna throw up a big old you know Winnie the Pooh mug and and say I actually played I played Pooh uh, actually on. Uh, it was only once one performance too. So I, yeah, I don't claim any um, mastery of Winnie the Pooh voice, but I, th I can try. I can try. Uh, think, think, think. I don't know. That was <laughs> I was is, that, is that something he said? Did he say yes. think, think, think? Think, think, think. Man, think, did you watch this growing up? Winnie the Pooh? Yeah, like the... Like the um, yeah, I think I did. Yeah, there was like a book that I grew up with, and it might have been in Japanese. Like really yeah i want to get st stuck in the hole and because he ate too much be uh, yeah rapids on the other side i mean that's one of the ones that like the 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 movies adapted but like mm -hmm. i remember watching that there was two two movies disney movies one was winnie the pooh and the other one was dumbo um mm. when they both like get drunk or high and it's the <laughs> weird psychedelic trips that they have the pink elephants on parade fucked me up man like that that whole thing was like that that is something that a nine-year-old kid should not see and i didn't understand. and then much later in life i was like oh oh those animators were on drugs <laughs> that's what <laughs> um but here you, you know what haunts me is return to oz i just wanted to i won't see it put that out there i can't you see it and have I, you seen I, it before the, 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 i saw enough of it and the cover box alone freaked me out because the yeah. way that scarecrow looked i was like oh no it's weird. I don't. Right? How, I don't know how is that. Is that is that for children? I don't no. think it is. I don't think it should. Neither be. was like Watcher in the Woods. Like Disney was kind of like they. I blamed. I love the fact that you bring it. it was like they thought it was like a Disney princess. I'm like, okay, well, first of all, here's Disney's mo: immediately orphan the lead character. <laughs> like, immediately, <laughs> That's true. Like, it's Joseph Campbell on crack. But it's like we're gonna kill your parents or your best friend. Um, but that's what's going to begin your hero's journey. It it was right. always the most because you immediately. Th I can bring this back on track. It's easy to start off the a story with a death, and trust me, I know that will right. reveal something about a character or or imbue empathy about that character. Right? We did that in the Last of Us Part Two. It's not a cliche. Right. It's just a very effective tool. Um. You guys, one of the greatest prologues. Hmm. And look, man, I don't, I don't know, I don't know if you were, were, were you a gamer growing up, or is this like, holy shit, this has opened my eyes to a whole new world, and you're like just now getting into it. Uh, I was a gamer, but not, you know, open world. I played Final Fantasy VII, uh, the, the original. Okay. <laughs> uh, but, but I started playing again once I got this role. So. Yeah, a lot of open world games uh, I played. What did you play going in? Did you want to specifically open world because you liked the the gameplay or you were trying to understand the world that you were going to be operating in? Yeah, it was it was research. And I used to like air quote research because I was just playing video games, but right. it's, it was actually research. <laughs> um, I, I started with the Uncharted 1 through 3 and then um, just sort of branched out to Horizon Zero Dawn and... Um, uh god of war all, all the playstation exclusives really the last of us was of, of course one and two that's stranding wow. um you've been yeah. putting on some serious mileage on your playstation did you play second yeah. i did yes that's right did you go blue side. or red that's the big question blue first and then red second i played it twice yeah Oof. 
Yeah. I didn't like it. It was a great Path. game. I think it was a good Oh, yeah. Red Path was always just like, Delson is a dick. And I'm like, no, I want to be a hero. And that's... Yeah. That's I'm I'm still in Act One, right? So I'm I'm mm-hmm. back 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 to the prologue. So I yes, being, being someone who grew up playing games, and especially uh, same way, like my pedigree is very similar. Like Uncharted and Assassin's Creed really pulled me into what modern narrative was. Like like we hit we hit this big stride with with these new consoles, and yeah. uh, going into this, I did not want to know anything. This is how stupid I was and how ignorant I was. Okay. <clears throat> the name of the game is Ghost of Tsushima, right? By the way, mm-hmm. I refuse to call it sushi. Apparently, that is what some people, a lot of peers told me that that's like the, that's the street name. I was like, no, it isn't. I've heard people call it Ghost. Are you playing Ghost right now? Or Ghost of Tsushima, if you're the whole brevity thing. But what? I, I, I don't, I don't want to know. I see Ghost of Tsushima. I know that Sucker Punch yeah. likes to make like superhero games, like kind of there's a supernatural quality in somehow. You start wow. off the game, and by all appearances, to me, you die. Oh. This mm-hmm. is the prologue. All right. So this is in the first like five minutes of the game. So yeah. when you stand up on the beach, I'm like, oh, I get it. He's a ghost. And then you see Yuna. is like, oh, so she's the only one who can see him. That's nope. <laughs> You're just a dude. I was <laughs> like, oh, man. <laughs> this, is a, this is a ghost, the movie type situation. I, I was like, Yuna's yeah. the movie Goldberg. <laughs> like, make some pottery with Demi Moore. I, right. you know, I could give you a whole treatment for this thing. But that is one of the best prologues. Um, Ever just just the way it kicks off and the way it establishes the tone, the emissary comes out. I'm not going to get into that, but that whole part was just brilliant. And when that music kicks up and you realize you haven't rolled credits yeah. and you're just running through the field, I literally stood up and verbally out loud. So I was like, "Let's go!" I was in 100. percent So that was the difference between going in my perception of this and then actually sitting down and playing it. Now that you've crossed the breadth of three and a half years, I mean, almost, right? Three years for sure. November yeah. of 2016. So call it 2017. I mean, where you have, how is your perception of not only this game, this character, but this space, how is that, how has it changed? Or, or is it like, this I'm literally playing the movie that was in my mind. Oh no, not at all. I am constantly surprised by Sucker Punch's work. Um, I had the same reaction when, when he goes into the open world with that music, and wow. you know, you, you can't imagine all of that. You know, the acting in it. Um, but you know, it, also like the because there's so many takes. Which take are they going to use? Uh, what line are they going to edit? All of that. Um, yeah, I feel like I'm still learning uh, who Jen is. I mean, obviously, I have a very good idea of what I did, but playing it and watching it is 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 a different story, in my opinion. Dude, I don't know if you had the same freak uh, experience. No, what that that right there is I really <clears throat> just dropped a marker because that is such a great thing to say. Playing it is such a different thing. Um, once you actually get controller in hand, I, I always think that if I did a good job. I forget that it's me. Like I, I I'm not yeah. paying attention to like, oh, that's the take they chose. Um, but 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 totally. but go on because I'm I'm curious to see like, was there a specific moment that you were like, this is not what I thought it was. Um, how far have you gotten, dude? <sighs> Did you get to right, right now? One? So here here's my problem with open world games. Yeah distractions if i it, but they're not distractions man it, oh, okay. it, if if i like if i'm if i'm like this is an okay game i'm gonna do golden path only i'm gonna go from narrative point to narrative point to narrative point and then if i finish the game and i like it then i'll come back in and i'll kind of fill in all the gaps i spent yeah. the last two hours chasing foxes and paying honor you know honoring shrines so like it is yeah. it gives me th- this kind of game gives me the just that without being too punny and on the nose 
it gives me that zen vibe of just like i just want to jump on my horse and i want to ride around and see what i can see i want to watch where the yeah. wind blows and literally go where the wind takes me and then every once in a while whenever i kind of get a little bored maybe i run into someone that i want to just like you know slice their head off real quick you know so it's <laughs> this wonderful thing that it grants me the ability to do um yeah. so I, I appreciate you not wanting to spoil me but as much as you can in broad strokes like if nothing oh, else sure. if that's a mo if that was a moment on stage where you're like this is going to be something different I'm, I'm just curious to see if you had that moment um well the the moment was uh, that was very emotionally striking to me that, so far it was the, the you know the Dem T temuge fight where yes. he's Oh, okay, you've been there. So yeah, the <clears throat> the way that was done with where he just cuts off his head, and I don't think he's ever done that, you know, prior to the game. Um, so I didn't really act any of that, but there's a moment where be right before where he's you see Jin and he kind of something in him snaps, and then he cuts the Tamuge's head off, and then he keeps you know he keeps killing. Um, so I guess, so these, this happens in between the scenes that I've shot. And I guess that's why I was so like shook by so it. You're discovering this in your gameplay. You're not discovering this on the stage. You're discovering this after the game is right. over. Holy shit. Right. Yeah, man. Um, because I, I performed, yeah. Cause I performed the scene prior to what hap what happens in that moment. And all the voiceovers in there, but and it w definitely what happens after there's a speech um, that happens in game. But yeah, that, that happens in game. And the way they did it, I was just um, and, and that's when he learns the ghost stands uh, and further comes the ghost. Um, yeah, the way they did it, uh, I was just it was just really moving. And also because I think that's that was one of the moments that I learned something about Jin is that because he's so, you know, he was trained to not, you know, hide your emotions or bottle it up or something, because that's the way of the samurai. But there's something in there that just snaps and just goes, you know, berserk. So as a player, um, and this happens in The Last of Us Part Two, obviously too, where I thought I knew my character, hmm. and but then there's something in there that I did not, um, that I did not know. And, uh, and I think as, as I play more and, and see more of the story, you get to see more of that side of Jin. When you said, going back to a comment that you made, you said when you <clears throat> saw the sides come down, and you said, this role is mine, I just need to go out and get it. Was there something beyond just the fact of like the, um, <laughs> the things that would tick the box on the census, right? Mm -hmm. um, was there something else that, that I, I have no idea what materials you were given beforehand or if it was just like, I mean, here's, here's the, the big thing, not the, not the big thing. Here is something that had never happened before. Mm. We're in a completely, the, 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 the conversation of our culture has shifted and this is not a new conversation that has happened, but as far as like, Hey, maybe we don't just have like a bunch of white people that are our heroes and our superheroes and our leads. And maybe they're not just like these white dudes, um, but maybe we can actually look and, and, and look deeper to find epic stories that um, can be told and experienced in, inside of this medium. Mm -hmm. um, did you, was there any part of you with that? That was like, this is why I, this is why I need to do this. Mm -hmm. And, and further to that, well, answer me that, and then I'll, I have a follow-up question, if I may. <laughs> oh, sure, yeah. Um, yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, I was talking to somebody about this uh, earlier. Um, yeah, growing up, like, I, I mean, I grew up watching Star Wars and a lot of, you know, Hollywood movies. Um, so even in my adulthood, being an actor, you know, I'm used to playing the supporting roles or the comedic roles, and you know, I was fine with that. And only recently, with Ghost of Tsushima playing the hero, and I played um, Bertram in All's Well, whereas you know, a weird ingenue, but uh, it's an on technically an ingenue role. Um, it was kind of it, it, it was it was hard to get used to, 
to just see myself as as that as the leading man number one um, yeah and i it was something to just get used to um and own it and and accept it and be okay with it um but it means a lot to me and the asian american community and i hope you know it in, in, inspires uh whoever's playing the game uh if they're asian american or whatever if they identify with it that they you know that they see themselves as uh you know they can be heroes too um and to further the conversation because of all the protests that's happening mm -hmm. um i would like to see i i'm i'd like to advocate uh for a, a black hero as uh in a video game you know i think that's um, I think that's important and it also very relevant, you know, and like, why not tell a story where, uh, um, a black hero, like is seen by the world as, you know, a, a criminal, but he's actually just a really has a heart of gold and he's just trying to be a hero, Dude, you know, to, to put up a treatment for that, that would get. Yeah, no, I'm trying to, I'm trying to sell it. Like, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, you bought me, here's my 60 bucks. I, yeah. I agree. And I think um, Microsoft just showed something off that looked um, compelling that we have. I'm just starting to see more across the board. And, and, and I, I love it because it's not only we saw this happen with with women, right? Um, they're like, yeah. OK, OK, we'll give more women roles. And it's like, well, right. don't know what you need to do. First of all, is it's not about casting. It's about writing. And the thing right. that I love about Jen right now and all of the characters that I'm seeing in this, these aren't just like. Okay, so see, we're we're being we're being diverse, aren't we? Good. It's like, no, you're writing great characters. The tutorialization yeah. in this game alone is like that's a clever way to do this. And by the way, these people also happen to have this culture that's inclusive of this. So it wasn't like, do, you know what I mean? Like it's it, it's very easy for people to to stereotype and perpetuate the problem, even in, yeah. a, in an attempt to be diverse. But growing up, you're watching Star Wars, you're watching, you know, everything. I have no idea how old you are. I'm 44. How old are you? Uh, 38. I guess. Okay. So, I mean, we're let's, relatively let's the same spot. age. Oh, sorry. We can cut it out. <laughs> uh, I don't we'll care. We'll cut that out and make people wonder. <laughs> um, the the beauty of that is, is, like, growing up, I was watching people just like me, whether it was a big screen or a small screen. I was like, hey... I look like that, kind of. I mean, I have my own distances because I never looked. I was this skinny, scrawny kid. So if there was ever somebody like there that was able to be the hero, then that was me. But did you ever feel underrepresented or did, could you ever put your finger on it? Or was that, that happen much later where you're like, wait a minute. Like, I haven't, the only person that I see that's of any other ethnicity besides just like white dude is, like you said, second banana, comic relief, um, he's the red shirt. That is, he goes like, you're on the away team. You're like, ah, shit. <laughs> you know? um, but did you, is that the way you felt growing up or were you even aware of that? Well, I came to the States when I was eight. So I think by the time I, you know, I was kind of aware of the world. Um, yeah, the, those types of views um, were starting to set, right? Uh, you know, seeing, seeing the, seeing the world where, yeah, you only see white people as heroes. Um, and uh, as an Asian American, my struggle has always been like, I, I, I was never Japanese enough and I was never American enough. Hmm. I feel like I'm still kind of struggling with that. I mean, but at the same time, I'm very, you know, I've accepted myself as who I am, it's just Asian American and that's all right, you know? For you, it seems to be more, it's, it's less of a um, appropriated term that was like, here's what we call you here. You're like, no, dude, like, because you were, you weren't even born in Japan. You were born in Kuwait? Yeah, Kuwait. My dad was an architect um, and he was just working there. That's, that's all the story there. But uh, I don't remember anything. I was a baby. So, <laughs> But then you did live in Japan until you, like you said you were like eight years old. Is that right? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Do you go back? Have you ever been back? A uh, couple times. Uh, one, when I worked for Cirque du Soleil, I did a tour. So I got to like, as an adult, kind of um, 
uh, tour Japan, which is really cool. I think, yeah, whenever, oh, and I, uh, last year I went to the island of Tsushima as research. Wait a minute. Which is cool. Yeah. How authentic is it? How, how did they like did they get it right? Or you're like, you guys messed up, man. Well, uh, it was, I, you know, going in, I was being kind of cocky. I don't know if cocky is the right word, but uh, I thought like, oh, the video game is going to be even more beautiful than the real thing. And then I went to the island. Of course, the real, real nature is beautiful. Really? Um, yeah, of course. Um, but mostly greens uh, when I went. Apparently in autumn it's red, but uh, there's some red leaves. Um, but yeah, it's not like as diverse. They don't have snow, obviously. Um, but yeah, it's really beautiful. Um, and some of the, was it pampas grass? Those white yes. grass things? Yeah, they actually, I think they have those. So, yeah. What is that I, like? I, man? I mean, that's that's not. I, I I don't think I've ever had that experience where it's like I've had something kind of close where I did a western and we were out in the desert. We're on horses. Mm -hmm. We're in period gear, and if you kind of like didn't look over this way, you couldn't see the power lines. And if there wasn't an airplane flying over, you kind of squint. You like you could put yourself there, but that's like. Had you started shooting when you went there, or were you like, as preparation, I really want to connect? Like, what what prompted that trip? Because that's just that's dope. Yeah, that was before last year. So before the bulk of the shooting. So yeah, it was. Um, it, I saw it as my own like open world game. You know, I was just I rented a car and just you know ride rode my car horse rental car horse <laughs> and uh and there it's a tourist island but not a whole lot of a lot of, a lot of tourists tourism um because some of the the roads would be like it won't be two lanes it would just be one so i don't it's like i don't know how how i'm gonna you know if there's if there's another car coming up i would have to it's back a, up a coin there. flip as far as how the whole thing's gonna go <laughs> yeah, yeah so there weren't a lot of people which was kind of it worked for me like it was great so i got to just sort of walk around the island and and i got to see like the the castle remains because they don't have the castles anymore they have the remains uh they have the temples and the beach where they fought they actually fought um yeah just, just trying to just soak it in i don't know if it actually you know made the, the acting better <laughs> but well um, i think it but it sounds like it it made your experience better dude i i, I think that there yeah. look as actors you always want, want to try to ground it in something but well I, I don't know man maybe look there's everyone talks about a process you know that you have and i, I i've certainly had those things where <laughs> before we started the last of us i told my friend travis i said dude you know what i'm gonna do man i'm gonna i'm gonna go out i'm gonna get a horse and I'm gonna. I'm just gonna camp out for like three days by myself. I'm just really gonna get in touch with this. He's like, "Where are you gonna do that?" I'm like, "I think I'm just gonna, you know, just go out in the wilderness, man." He was like, "Cool, cool. You're absolutely not gonna do that because you could get like killed by it. We live in California, man. There's mountain lions. There's bears. It's like you're absolutely yeah. not. You can get bit by a bee or by a snake or something. It's like that's it. He goes, "There's all sorts of stuff that we can do if you want to connect to the character." But I can understand like. Were you wanting to have? Did you have the experience when you went there that you that you wanted to have, or did you find once you were there that you had a completely different kind of experience? Um, yeah, I think I did, and, and I'll share this story. So before that, I went to Cambodia because that was more of the research. Because Cambodian, um, I did a play called Cambodian Rock Band, and that was about the the genocide. Uh, regime of Khmer Rouge genocidal regime that was happening in 1975 to 1979. Um, and I, and I played a, um, a, the bad guy, uh, in it. Um, so I had to know the history, um, very well to like be, you know, respectful of the people and the history. Cause sure. on, on top of that, I'm, I'm not Cambodian. So like I had to do like extra research and homework. So going into Cambodia for that show, was I felt it was necessary because it it made me feel responsible for the story, um, mm. and and I'm not sure if uh, you know goes to going to Tsushima had that much of an impact, but um, 
it, it did make me appreciate the, the beauty of the island. And if anybody listening, you know, visits Tsushima or any part of Japan, really, it's a very clean country. So please keep it that way. Is what I would say. You know, it one. Yeah. I've, I've I've spent time in Japan, and I uh, mm. two different times. One was for three weeks, and the second time was for two months on a shoot. And um, the thing that I found out, I I had walked out of our hotel in my apartment, and I had like a bottle of water, and I'd finished it. And so mm. I was walking around, we were in Ginza, and I was trying to find just a place to throw it away. Nope. <laughs> it, <laughs> it's so hard to just find like a, just like a, a, a trash can. Um, yeah. And, but there's no trash on the streets and it's the most quietest. It's was like, literally someone just went out to um, like the middle of, of Tokyo. Um, it's like someone just took, um, middle of uh new york uh times square and just turn the volume down to two um because it's equally as bright and, and active and everything else it's just there's this level and layer of respect and um congeniality and politeness that just is is wholly endemic to that country um yeah. I, I i wanted to ask because mm-hmm. um we we've talked a lot about it as far as like the 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 game and as far as an actor coming to it and the things you did to prepare and 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 definitely obviously this was a move sucker punch has always wanted to do this where they wanted to tell unique stories uh, about unique characters and do different they even did that with delson um what do you feel there's and maybe i ask this because i've i've had experience this over the last couple months where there's this this immediate equation between your character and you as a person. Um, yes. And sometimes as actors, it's a hard, t- the hard thing for us to, like I, I, have, I have a hard time sometimes like delineating is like, who am I versus this character? And, and sometimes I can inform my, my choices because what Troy wants to do in the scene is not necessarily what Joel wants to do in the scene. Um, and those can mm-hmm. be in conflict. So I understand the conflation between the character and the actor. Did you ever feel a personal sense of responsibility um, like you talk about with going to Cambodia and, and making sure that you understand the history of it so that you could properly tell the story. Did you walk in feeling with a, a sense of responsibility to this story, this character, this me? Did you feel any of that? And if so, I'd, I'd love to hear from you what what that beautiful burden felt like to you. A beautiful burden. Yeah. Um, I definitely felt the responsibility. And I, but I'm not so sure if it's connected to story as much as um, just the, the overall cultural understanding. And uh, we had a um, Japanese uh, expert, I guess, uh, on set. Uh, her name is Sachi uh, and Yumi, who did the the dialect coach and they were always you know making sure if this was you know if they're Japanese how would they move how would they bow um all of that um and um yeah story-wise I think they did a very good job of you know keep making them human but I think one of the one of the things I had to like kind of collaborate with them early in the the process was um, in a lot of projects, uh, when they write Asian roles, specifically Japanese roles, I think too, um, the characters speak in poetry in a way, yeah. you know what I mean? Like every, every word out of their mouth is like, oh, the, <laughs> the wind has, I don't know, struck sure. I don't know, it's, it's stuff like that. Jen? Oh, I find that my heart is a flutter and filled with the butterflies. If there's like, oh, cool, exactly. you're having a good day then. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So I want. So I, early on, I think I there was a line that was kind of like that. So I said, uh, maybe not do that, because <laughs> I seem to, <clears throat> you know, even like at auditions, there's so many examples of that uh, that I face. Um, so yeah, I think. I told them, yeah, just make them human. What would they What would they talk about? And uh, if there was just, how would they talk if they're just human? I feel like this is something that is um, unique to the game space specifically. And, and, and Sucker Punch mm. definitely does an, an amazing job of 
including their cast into the, and it's sometimes even to a fault. Like one of my favorite memories um, with <laughs> with Brian Fleming as a studio head of, of, of Sucker Punch happened after uh, we had wrapped. And I like to consider myself, and especially then I wanted to consider myself a, a very collaborative partner. And I like um, I like getting into it with everybody. And, and I want it to be this, even if it's contentious sometimes, we're going to find the better scene. And afterwards, we did a postmortem with Brian, and he was like, "Hey, man, I just want to give you the opportunity. You were, you were, you know, an ad hoc member of our team. I, I would love to hear from you what we excelled at, what we didn't, what we could have done better." And I was like, "Dude, I got some great ideas, right?" And me, little puppy-eyed boy, comes at him, and I was like, "This is what I think you could do better." And it was just full of arrogance. And Brian <laughs> sits there and graciously listens to all of it. And I was like, "Hey, man, you know, turnabout's fair play. Go for it. I'd love to hear from you what what you think." And he goes, "Um." you are a very powerful force. And I was like, thank you. He goes, not a compliment. <laughs> he said, Where you are trying to enact change is too far down the river. Like, you need to understand that there are, there's blood on the pages that we're handing you. Ah, And I went, oh, shit. And I didn't realize that when I wanted to, and I don't know if you felt this way at all, like it's, 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 it speaks to their, their benefit when they go, we allow you into our process. And the fact that you may look at it and go, just want to let you know, I, I, I really feel like we have an opportunity to flip the script and mm-hmm. present a different kind of character here. The, again, the humility, because like, this isn't their first game, right? They've been around right. a while. But the, the, the ability for them to go, Okay, then we're going to take these pages that have blood on them and we're going to change that and we're going to be able to tell a story and the, just the, the level of trust that they tell uh, or the, that, they, that they demonstrate in that is, is impressive. Um, yeah. But that, that, that's, that is one thing that I wanted to ask you is, is, as far as like, did you, can you kind of walk in you're like, oh shit, there's people that are like, don't mess this up. You know, you're, you have an entire generation of, of people and, and a culture that you have to honor. Uh, which can be a daunting task. And, and yeah. now you're moving in from, like, like you said, you've everything that you could have done on the stage, you did. You left it all on the stage, left it all in the booth. And now you're picking up the controller and now you're playing it. And you decided, like, did you, did you while you were doing it, you're like, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to live stream this when I'm done. Or did this come after, like, what, what prompted all of that? The, the live stream yeah. part of it? Yeah. Oh, that was just... I wanted to show it to my parents and my brother because they don't have a PlayStation. Get on Twitch. Um, <laughs> Is that this yeah, get on Twitch. And I thought, you know, they can see my face and they can see the game. This, this is great. This is a great app. Um, <laughs> and then, yeah, the first day there was like 100 whatever viewers. And I, I'm not, you know, I don't know how streamers do, do it with thousands of viewers because 100 people, I was like, oh, I don't know how to act like a human anymore. It's like just like... Isn't that you know, this thing? Even though you've been on camera, you've been on stage. What was it? What was different about now? You, it was it a different medium, a different platform. What was it that made it? You're like, oh shit, this is something new. Yeah, because when when you're playing a video game, you don't feel like you're entertaining people. When you're acting, it's like, oh, I'm telling a story. Sure. When you're playing a video game, I'm just, I'm just you know. <laughs> Yeah, uh, <laughs> I, do not, I do not look good when I'm playing a video game. It is it is just just borderline like Bell's palsy, possible stroke. <laughs> not good. Yeah, um, I'm I'm definitely gonna play it a second time through with just me because I know that's gonna be a very different experience. You know, what have you enjoyed about streaming though? With with this being yeah. a foray, like what what about well, this kind of environment do you like? <laughs> Well, now it does feel like a performance, um, but more relaxed way. And I, mm. you know, it's become its own community, you know, and I feel like we're, we're looking for that right now with the pandemic. We're all kind of looking for some connection. Um, and I feel like <laughs> a lot of the viewers say that this is, oh, this is a very wholesome channel, <laughs> which kind of which kind of makes me like wonder what other channels are like, but it's, it's um, a cesspool of content out there. By that's what I hear. Yeah. But I, so now it's like, Oh, I pride myself in like creating like a wholesome, positive uh, community and 
yeah, I'm so I'm really I am really enjoying it. It's in a very different way than just playing it by myself. Um, yeah. Now that you have kind of captured not that you haven't had accolades and, and credits before, but again, like you said, this is the first time that it was like, I'm in a lead role and I'm used to playing some, someone's rel- There's always someone higher on the call sheet. Um, now that you do kind of have these eyes on you and, and, and you do have people that are watching you do these live streams, right. um, what do you do? Do you feel a different responsibility now? Uh, now that it's not just about, you know, Daisuke, the actor, walking in to to portray this character, Jim. But now Daisuke is a character. Da- Daisuke is an actual person that people are going. Well, I want to know. L- like me, I was like, I want to know more about this dude. Um, yeah. How do you how do you respond to that? As uh, what do you want to do with this? Like, what what do you have now? It's not about what's your next project. It's like, what do you right. want to do? This is this is a tremendously phenomenally. There's a lot of games that come out every year. And there are very, 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 very few that get to experience the level of success, and not only just commercially, but critically, um, as much as this game has. And everyone knows that you're the you're the guy. And people have right. gone on hours, dozens of hours now of, of experiences with with you as their your character that together with Sucker Punch you created. What do you do with that opportunity now? Like, what do you want to do? Oh boy, um, there's. I think there's a couple of parts to that. I'm um, going back to what you said about like um, being Joel versus being Troy. Yeah, I feel like that's one of the first one. Yeah, th- one of the things that I'm struggling with is like, how do I how do I preserve myself? <laughs> Sure. Where everybody, you know, people are like, oh, talk like Jin, do the Jin voice or, you know, <laughs> so, um, and you know, the, the stream is very, it's called Jinception because somebody coined it and it's like, oh, that's fun. And everything, you know, the emotes are all Jin related. So it's like, yeah, this is fun. But at the same time, it's like, well, well I'm, I'm not Jin, <laughs> I'm an actor. So I need to like, you know, take care of myself. And, uh, and so I need to do that. As far as responsibility goes, um, again, it's like, there's a part of me that's like, uh, you know, there's a pandemic and there's uh, uh, systemic racism and uh, uh, the arts funding, uh, the, the F- FPUC, the Federal yeah. Pandemic Unemployment uh, Compensation is like ending today. Uh, it's not been extended. So a lot of my theater friends are going through, is going to go through hard times uh, for weeks or months until the Senate does anything. Um, so <laughs> what can I do with this streaming that's, you know, useful to people? And I think, um, just creating a space that's positive and, um, again, you know, creating a community where people feel like they belong and, um, and also this game itself, I think is, is very right for this time where people, you know, can fight their own fight the fights that necess- that are necessary right now but then you know come home and take the controller and you can control you have c- full control of the video game at least because we don't have control of the world mm-hmm. right now <laughs> but we have the control of this video game and you can go to you know anywhere in this on this beautiful island and it's very serene and i think we need that right now and i think that's you know that's what i'm trying to with the with the stream and um i guess this little fame that i have right now uh that's that's what i want to create